Hello, this is Jeff. Uh, just wanted to shoot this video in, uh, in response to some uh, questions and, and comments I've been getting over the last uh, oh, couple weeks uh, since the last time I posted. So um, as you can see, I've got the bigger stove hooked back up um, just because it has the pellet feed and I've uh, been working out here and in the, the little stove works great, but you know, you got to feed it every, you know, two, two and a half, three hours or whatever. This thing I can basically fill up the, the pellet hopper on it and um, I only have to put wood in it maybe twice uh, during the day as I'm working. So uh, it mostly burns pellets. And like I said, I'm getting, oh, anywhere from 10 to 11 hours plus burn time out of the pellets. So, um, so I hooked it back up. It's simple. It's a, I, I can honestly, I can switch these stoves out in a matter of like three or four minutes. So um, uh, the, the, the stack height on the exhaust is the same. So I don't have to change anything as far as the exhaust goes. So without any uh, further ado, um, as you can see, er everything's, it, it's cold. There's nothing, uh, nothing in either the pellet hopper or the, or the wood. It's, it's uh, uh, wide open. All I do is just uh, throw a couple pieces of throw a couple pieces of this um, this kind of junk wood here. It's uh, well, it's like one by twos. Um, it's mostly like soft wood. This was what um, has wrapped up uh, the pipe that I used to, the place where I used to work at. The pipe used to come bundled and it had like a green strap around it. So this is just old cheap wood, like, you know, just scrap wood, pine, and whatnot. Um, so yeah, I just uh, throw some of that in there. Uh, as you can see, my pellets are. I uh, went ahead and filled up the pellet hopper. Um, just open open that butterfly up. Uh, you really don't have to put the lids on. But, uh, put them on the right one. Uh, really don't have to, but I'll put it on. I closed my, my side door. Uh, I've been using these little, the little cotton ball with the Vaseline uh, idea that I've seen a lot of people use. Uh, I've been using that. I just opened uh, opened my little sliding door here on the uh, on the pellet hopper, and the pellets will you know feed around that um, the the holder in there with the thing with the slots in it. I'll give you I'll give you a close up once it's going and. Uh, I just like that. And I'll give you, a, I'll take this camera off the this, uh, holder kind of give you a close-up of what's going on as you can see it just kind of just kind of uh, sucks it down through the center there that um, it'll it'll ignite it'll ignite pretty quick and get a draw going um, especially with that T uh, like I said with the T you know and the in the horizontal position or open position, um, it takes off pretty quick. The, it dra as you can see, that drafts really good. Maybe you can see the flame kind of shooting right straight up through the center of the um, of the pellet holder there, and uh, it'll it'll ignite pretty quick. I don't know if you can hear. It's already starting to get that uh, that rocket sound. Huh. 
But um, like I said, it, 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 it ignites pretty quick within oh a minute or two i can go ahead and shut down that that t and then the the bottom the bottom exhaust will take straight on over and um but uh oh um a few people wanted to see my uh i've set up a ladder as you can see we still have snow on the ground it's been uh we've we've had single digits pretty much almost every day um yesterday a lot of, well, a lot of the snowpack and ice and stuff we had um started to melt off but we have we've had probably a good oh eight or nine inches at least on the ground um uh, maybe more for a week or so as you can see here on the top a little bit of Mostly what I get out of the top of this thing is steam. Um, a lot of people wanted to see my, uh, uh, as you can see, it's kind of packed in grease. But what I've done, I took a, um, an old uh, um, router bit that had a ball bearing guide uh, in it. You can see it there on top. I just welded it on, the, on a cross piece on there. Uh, to make it where it, uh, you know, pivots. As you can see it, I've been burning this for a couple weeks like this, and it, uh, it'll pivot pretty nice with the, uh, with, you know, with the wind, so. Um, it's cheap, just, <laughs> I made it out of some of that four inch round pipe, and just, as you can see, just pinch the end on top and burn a couple holes here and there, but, uh, and then just trimmed on the bottom where it was, uh, where it come out into a square, I just kind of rounded it off, but uh, uh, works pretty good, um, like a weather vane. So, um, like I said, you'll see a little bit of the smoke come out for a couple minutes, but um, like I said, a lot, a lot of it's steam. And as you can see, you get a lot of that pellet gook. I don't know what else to call it. It's a brown, um, just kind of a nasty, nasty stuff. But um, it started discoloring the side of my. Uh, front of the garage right there when I had the other um, windbreak on it so uh, anyways when I extended the pipe out and everything you can see it you get some of that runny runny like tarry looks it's real sticky um, it doesn't seem to really build up on the inside of the pipe but uh, it definitely um, it definitely drips like I said you get a lot of steam out of this thing there's the smoke that you see out of it is not wood smoke um, that you smell. It's it's steam evaporating uh, out of the pipe in the stove. So there's uh, there's the um, my close up of my wind directional cap and my uh, router bed idea. Um, look like it's gonna gonna hold up, you know, fairly nice. So get back down off the roof here. This I trying too hard one to see that about a week or so. a week week and a half ago or so but uh like i said the roof was covered in about an inch uh, about an inch of ice and probably seven eight nine inches of snow on top of it so i don't know if you can see here probably not but a little little bit of steam like i said it's it's not not necessarily wood smoke but it's uh more uh condensation in the uh in the exhaust so uh, and as you can see probably and here i don't know how long that was just a few minutes i don't know if you can hear that rocketing sound or whatever but the wood's already ignited um, see that the, the probably the flame that that pellet uh, that the pellet hopper there is given off it shoots a really really nice flame I mean it's all the way around the outer side it like dives down and back up and then just um, just a, a, a really nice flame pattern that it throws on both sides and and through the center uh, I said, oh, I didn't even shut my, uh, 
I usually don't leave it run that long. Um, I usually just, I, sh I shut this down like after a couple minutes, if that. Um, I usually don't leave it open that long, but as you can see, shutting it down, still a really nice flame pattern. And also the the rocketing sound. So um, after it's running for a little bit, I usually, like I said before, I I shut that down a little bit. Um, I'll open that, and uh, as you can see, the smoke will just suck right back down, uh, suck right back down in there. And you get you get a, a real nice even burn like that. I mean it. The pellets are still ignited pretty well, and uh, um, then you get a real nice burn on the wood. This this wood that I'm burning here, uh, I brought some in. It's supposed to start actually raining or snowing or something later this afternoon. I brought some in yesterday to kind of dry out. But uh, again, this is probably not, this is really hard stuff. I mean, it's been seasoned for years and years and been laying out in the field and in mud and, um, it is it is extremely dense hard oak and uh i've noticed and burning it in the um in my little stove here uh it if you don't constantly kind of stoke it or not not constantly but uh probably every half hour to 45 minutes if you don't jiggle the wood around in it um it'll it'll just kind of burn itself out it's it's that hard or put some of that pine um some of this uh some of the scrap wood here that i got split up for sort of like kindling um you really don't need the kindling uh when in here you th this is the first time i put any in here usually i'll just put the pellets in grab about three or four sticks of that oak throw it in here and just and just let it rip um you know the the, the pellets will go ahead, you know, and ignite the um, um, the oak, and it'll just take off and run. So, uh, so there's kind of a there's kind of a nice what I call is this is about as slow as you want to get it. As if you try to re, uh, restrict or, or retard the air any more than like that. If, if you try to close it all the way up, the pellets will go completely out and, you know, the wood wood will just take over and, uh, and burn. So, um, and then you can obviously uh, regulate the burn of the wood itself just by closing this damper up and down. So you can see it's, the, the wood's probably just starting to ignite a little bit, so. Um, we'll go back out and again probably just a very little bit of smoke but like I said mo mostly steam it it'll get about a foot or two away from the chimney and just totally or the the wind cap up there and just totally disappear so uh, if it was actual wood smoke it would obviously leave more of a trail so um, it's cool to touch. Like I said, this several times I've checked the temperatures and everything on this. Uh, you know, running, running about a thousand degrees between eight eight hundred and a thousand degrees here, and anywhere from six to eight hundred degrees uh, off the top of here, and the stovepipe itself, um, right around maybe a hundred degrees. 80 to 100 degrees uh, normally. Um, I've had another uh, a lot of other people uh, ask me about my plastic fan over here too. <laughs> um, I, honest to goodness, this thing. Let me take my gloves off here. Uh, as you can see, how close it is. Here's here's the edge of the stove. Here's the fan, and I mean absolutely. I've been burning this thing for for uh, well over couple months now either with this stove or the other stove and they both set the exact same um, even with this thing going full tilt uh, you can hold your hand half inch maybe inch away and get absolutely no heat back 
um, I, I'd almost consider this what what a lot of people probably consider a zero clearance stove. You could, I would have absolutely no problem putting this thing right up this this close to drywall, um, and would not worry any about it igniting. So same same with the exhaust too. I mean, you can tell. I mean, it's it's not even eighty degrees. It's actually still cold, even with the um, even when this damper was open. Uh, it it does not get um, you know like I said it's still kind of cool to the touch actually so not not even warm at all really but it's only been burning for what maybe 10 minutes 10 12 minutes so um, but there it is like I said you can see real nice flame still got the rocketing sound you can probably hear the wood popping uh, you see down in there uh, maybe you see it burning now this this wood act like I said is wet uh, I just split some of it up last night so um, it'll probably probably smoke a little bit but as you can see with that side door you can see how how much smoke is coming through there and it just sucks it right back down none I mean absolutely none comes back up um, out into the garage or you know wherever whatever room you're in but it's that it's that simple uh, very simple setup um, easy to start as you've seen um, like I said I use those cotton balls it's just easier than holding a torch on it for 20 30 seconds whatever you know it normally takes to um, to uh, ignite the pellets but uh, but yeah and, and like I said, you can turn it down. You can you can turn that down. You can turn this down and get you know you got it. You got it. This is what I consider a slow burn, but you're still getting a real nice, real nice flame and real nice rocketing sound. If you can hear that. That shut down and little little bit oh there a little bit of smoke like I said it's mostly steam but um, and get some nice I didn't bring my I didn't bring my heat gun I never thought to bring my heat gun out but uh, uh, I can't hold my hand more than closer than three inches above this thing it's it's pretty hot and this thing here is just yeah this is steaming hot i'd say this is already well up to probably seven eight hundred degrees easily um i apologize for not bringing the heat gun out but like i said it it heats up pretty quick see nice flame going down in there the woods united nice um, so i think i had uh, hopefully that give everybody uh you know what they wanted to see and um it's kind of like i said wide open toned down uh you can i can change it probably to two three hundred degrees um pretty quickly uh you know the heat coming off from that just by uh playing around with these dampers uh you know closing closing one down opening the other one and vice versa closing that one down opening this or closing it or uh you can really fine tune this thing um and like i said the the little one over here is the exact same way um i got the side door here that that spins um you know i can open open that a little bit and you know leave that one to open maybe a half inch or i can open it wide open uh close this down and uh essentially get you know a, a tuned in tuned in burn you know either either real hot or um again you can't you can't tune these things down like a traditional wood stove you can't damper it completely down uh because they'll go they'll go out simple as that um like i said i can i can essentially sh shut both of these down almost immediately um just by closing these doors closing that i can close this and within 
a minute or so, uh, the flame's totally out. Um, so but there it is. Uh, burning feels good it's it's a chilly day um when i first come out i should i i was gonna i looked at it but i didn't take a uh a picture of it it was it was 22 degrees 22 degrees um basically 20 minutes ago when i come out here and it's almost to 40 right now it looks like 30 38 39 degrees so within 20 minutes and then another like I said, another 20 minutes from now, it'll be up to about 50, 55, pretty easy. And that's not that's not even running a fan. Um, if I turn this fan on, obviously it'll uh, it'll move the air around a little bit uh, quicker, uh, warm it up in here. But um, usually I can come out, start it, start it like that, let it run, and within 40, 45 minutes to an hour, it's nice and comfortable um, out here. And that's, and that's another thing. You guys asking me about, you know, the heat output, and I'm going to hit on this subject real quick. You cannot throw this stove, even though as hot as it gets, you cannot throw this stove in a 40 by 40 steel Morton building and expect it to heat up. It, it just, it's not the right tool, basically, for the job. Um, a lot of people are asking me, uh, you know, you know the size of the garage how, how it heats it up and everything and honestly as much heat as this thing throws out it's at its limit with a 24 by 24 garage with drywall no insulation but drywalled walls and an open ceiling um if this garage was any bigger this stove would not do the job period um you know i don't care what anybody says about them or whatever uh it just it would be it'd be it'd be like trying let me see if I can explain this. It would be like trying to heat a house with a candle. Um, like I said, we're, we're comparing to this, my garage to say a, a steel Morton building uh, with steel walls, no insulation, wide open. Um, it, it would take a larger, like, you know, like the guys making them out of 55 gallon drums. You would just need a larger volume of of heating area you know larger a much larger stove maybe even go with a mass uh heating system if you've got something like that um if you put either this stove or this little stove right here in a different situation other than this garage a, a bigger one with either steel walls or even wood walls with no insulation and no drywall or anything like that, you're going to be sorely disappointed. It will not, um, you know, over, over seven or eight hours of burning, it might knock the chill off a little bit, um, but it's not going to heat it up like a furnace would or uh, some kind of propane forced air type uh, salamander or something like that or even even like one of these top hats here now I've got got an old top hat heater here uh, it would this thing here it is it will give about the same performance as this uh, this might get a, this one will probably get a, a little bit hotter but it gives the same performance as far as heating up uh, cubic feet of space now I've got a probably probably can't see I've got a salamander heater also that runs off propane now it will do it will heat the same area three times as fast as that with a smaller flame but it has a high CFM fan on it and it really moves uh, the air around and heats it up a lot quicker so uh, again choose like i've been getting a lot of questions you know what how big of an area will these things heat and and on and on and you you just got to choose the right tool for the job if you if you put this stove like i said in a 40 by 40 or 30 by 30 steel morton building with just steel walls no insulation gravel floor even cement floor it's not going to put a dent on a on a 20 degree day you know 
after several many many hours it might knock the chill off a little bit it's not going to heat it up no 20 30 40 degrees inside it just it's not going to happen so um that's kind of my two cents worth on that uh so just um you know kind of keep that in mind uh these are not miracle stoves by any means uh the these do for me what i need them to do uh in my garage but if like i said if it was any bigger um or didn't have the at least the drywall uh on the walls um the, the i would have to do something else either make a you know a bigger stove or go back to my propane heaters one of the two because it this this particular stove just wouldn't cut the cut the mustard basically uh, as far as heating this up in here now if i put this in the house um it would probably run me out uh you know you're dealing with a small home you know very well insulated uh it you would have to run it low all the time if you ran it wide open um <laughs> it, it you'd be you'd have to crack windows honestly uh that's with no fan circulating or anything else so um but like i said that's my two cents worth on it uh just you know build the right stove or choose the right stove you know for the for the job that you want it and you'll you'll definitely be happy with it so this is jeff i hope this uh answered uh everybody's questions as far as um you know heating capacity of these stoves uh how i light it how it burns uh my wind cap and um if there's anything else just let me know comment um, send me a message what it what it uh, whatever you want to do and um, I'll uh, I try to answer every single question comment um, if I if I don't get to it right away I'm usually uh, busy but I try to answer it either the same day or the uh, or very next you know uh, first thing the very next morning so uh, I've really enjoyed it I enjoyed talk, uh, talking and chatting with a lot of you and so um, really enjoyed some of the new builds that's uh that's been posted on here over the last couple of weeks um uh, really some innovative ideas uh really uh, really cool stuff enjoy it keep it up and um as soon as i can get to the steel yard uh like i said we've had a lot of ice and uh ice and snow and everything up in the yard is covered uh he has some fork trucks and the metal that i want to get is in long lengths so uh, not been able to run the fork trucks up there through the yard, so I've got to kind of wait till this snow uh, either melts uh, or it starts raining, gets warm, does something where I can get up there and actually use the forklift to uh, uh, move some steel around so I can cut some uh, on the saw. So uh, right now, uh, it's my third build's kind of on the back burner till uh, till I can get you know, get the proper steel that I need. So it might be a few weeks, who knows? So this is Jeff, everybody have a great day and uh, I'll talk to you later on.